I'm Tom. And I'm Molly. Welcome to Forensic Gameology, hosted by ForensicGameology.com. Reviews for science. In seven minutes or less. Risk Legacy. The one that started the big legacy movement, which is funny, kind of funny to say at this point in time in 2018, is it big? Yes, because so many copies are sold and it's huge and I think Pandemic Legacy Season 1 was number one for a while. And Pandemic Legacy Season 2 is in the top 100 right now. So, well, yeah, it is big. And Charterstone and whatnot. Charterstone, Gloomhaven. So, a lot of people would argue with Gloomhaven being a legacy game. What else? It's a campaign game. Lots and of campaign games exist. Yeah, but campaign board games? Yeah. I mean, that's true. Never anyway. Never back. But you still anyway, change the board Anyway, this one started it all in which you, you change the board. This is super spoiler, by the way. We're going to put that in the title and everything. But I'm going to show you the board. If you don't want to see spoiler stuff, don't look. Turn off the video. Yeah, don't, don't watch it. But anyhow, we've got a bunch of stickers all over the board, and we've got a bunch of cities. The cards get stickers added to them, and I'll, like some of these coins on the cards are stickers that we put on here. Definitely this one. The um, player powers, these are all stickers that you add on there, and you can choose some of those from the beginning of the game. So like the whole thing is just playing Risk with permanent changes. Let's just jump into Simplicity versus Complexity. So it starts off being s simple. It doesn't really get more complex. It adds on as you go, but you have a power, and you start off, and you need to control. You need to get four stars, and there are multiple ways to get these stars. I don't even, oh, these right here. These stars. Each of your HQs that you own is a star, and then you can turn cards in to get a star, similar to actual risk, where you turn things in to get troops or to draw cards or whatever it is. You can do the same thing here, and the games tend to be shorter. So I think it's a pretty fairly... Pretty fairly? That's not how you say those two words together. It's a fairly simple game in the beginning, but then you add on. So it definitely progresses to where you have all these stickers that mean different things, and you think, what? What? Because, like Tom showed the top of the board, there are three things here that come with, the, like, that are not stickers, whereas these are. So rules get added on, and so the complexity comes, and it, and it adds on. But in the beginning, you're just rolling dice and trying to... Get, the, get your four stars, which tends to be the similar goal throughout the entire campaign, but things get added on and changed. Yeah, the rule book starts with this entire column here being blank, and then it's not blank anymore. We added stickers the whole time, so it starts out, I say, a little bit more complex than Risk, but like about as complex as any Risk variant that comes out. But then it gets more complex as you move through it, but I still think it's easy enough to handle. Let's talk simplicity. No, we just did that one. Let's talk luck versus strategy. Every time. Every time. Luck, luck versus strategy. Man, you're still rolling dice. Okay, so that was that's the that's one of the biggest complaints I think that I have about risk is that you're trying to you have this massive army and you're trying to take over someone that has a smaller army and then they just roll well. If you can roll well, they just roll lucky. And you don't, and your army gets whittled down, and you think, oh, I'm done now. I can't take this over. When maybe that's how actual wars work. I haven't studied them, so maybe it is more simulating of actual war. But you're still rolling dice, and that is lucky. But this one de has tons more options to mitigate your luck. In that you add, you add things at the end of each game. You get a bonus, and you can add a sticker to a card. To be like, I really, I like to have South America, so I'm going to add a sticker to one of the countries in South America, or regions. And so you can mitigate your luck based on that, and then all the new rules that come out with naming a city, putting these missile spots, I forget exactly what they're called. Oh, when, ammo shortages? When it makes your defense lower, or making your defense higher because you have a mercenary, and things like that. I mean, crazy things happen which change, and so it's, it's a lot of luck there. But there are things that you can do to mitigate that, and who you choose. And what powers you choose also helps. Yeah, I think that there it's risk, a lot of luck, but there's just a whole bunch of cool nifty things that make it strategic. Where are you going to place the stickers you get to choose a lot of times? And then it becomes a spatial element and people are moving around the board and trying to take your headquarters and where you're going to start. There's just a lot of, there's a lot of str uh, strategy to it, but I mean, you can't get around the fact that it still has all that same amount of luck that risk had in the first place. Fun versus boring. This game is an experience, and it's a great experience, and I would, I'm would i happy to have had it. We didn't finish our campaign. We actually had people drop out from the campaign doing, uh, owing to uh, moving, and uh, amongst other things. So it's it, you got to play the same, the same people each time, which we didn't. We tried to play around that, and so it, it's, it's difficult. It can be difficult. 
The other trick though, uh, is that this is the, like I said, it's an experience that I'm glad I had, but I probably won't do again. And not because once you've done it, you know everything, but because by the end, it started to feel like risk again, like base set risk. You get these super cool missions, and uh, here they are. These super cool missions that give you, here's, this one gives you two, two stars. That's pretty great. There's a couple others that let you get um, cool powers and whatnot. But the, the thing of it is, is once we, we played that way with a lot of missions, and I really enjoyed it. I was like, man, this is becoming one of my most enjoyed games. However, they, it starts to get to where the mission, if a single mission is too difficult to solve, no one will ever get it. And now that element is taken from the game because you can't cycle through the missions. You just have to play regular risk at that time. So I'm going to go with it is fun to an extent, but it, it comes in like a sine wave. Some of those have a real deep valley. I, I think it's more of a cosine wave, personally, but whatever. So I do feel the exact same way. Fun versus boring. It started off super fun. The games were shorter. They were within an hour, right? They would play so so quickly, and you weren't just bogged down and having to conquer the entire world, as in Risk. And then it turned into that, because we couldn't get through the missions. Because these missions are what help you go faster, help you get the stars. Because you just need to get four of them. And then it ends up being where you just need to conquer everyone's HQ and conquer everyone, just like in Risk. So Board Game Geek rating for me is 6 out of 10. I enjoyed it. It's above middle of the road, but I'm not going to do it again. 5 out of 10. Risk Legacy. We've presented the evidence. You be the judge. 